Facebook. So, hey everybody. Welcome. My name is John Ferguson. I uh, am the North Central Regional Coordinator for the uh, SCA US chapter. It's a nice long title. We're, we're going to work on that. I also work at the Arbor Day Foundation with the Arbor Day Coffee Program, and uh, and also I do a little, you know, mild tech stuff on the side where I go out and I try to try to help machines uh, run well, uh, make machines run better. Is that is that the motto of the SC, or is it make coffee better, make machines better, right? Um, and Marty here, uh, who are you, and what do you do, and where do you work, and why why are we here today? I am Marty Rowe out of Kansas City, born and raised. Um, uh, I'm the owner, co-owner with me and my wife of Workbench Coffee Labs um, and also uh, Service Call, which is a service company uh, that we founded in the, oh, just after 2000. Um, so by 2003, we were lock, stock, barrel, you know, dove head first into the coffee industry are you and, staying uh, busy uh we are we're, we're down some of our staff are is still furloughed um due to the covid 19 um but um yeah we've got a lot of irons in the fire right now um part of part of what's keeping me personally busy is i'm right right in the middle of uh finishing up the requirements for the AST certification to be able to teach um, uh, specialty coffee associations uh, curriculum. Me, so you've done, you've done uh, Q grading, obviously I did that yeah. uh, a couple years ago, I probably need to get recalled. Wasn't that fun? Oh, of course, it's always fun. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really fun with you guys down there. It's, it's, it's a, you got a great facility, it's really well located oh, and all that stuff. You. So um, what else do you have, what else do you have planned? Let's take another, minute here we'll talk about what's going on there and then i've got well, our big our big thing john is that we have historically been you mentioned the q grader uh class we we have done that and we'll probably still host some of those with outside uh instructors um as needed um but our focus is going to be a little bit away from the barista skills roasting skills classes and curriculum that we have been teaching and with the onset and the growth of the uh, technicians guild and the need for good technicians around the country, we're going to be 99.9%, .9%, I don't know the exact percentage, we're gonna be a very high percentage of what we have to offer training wise in that, that tech side, you know, learn how to safely and effectively work on uh, coffee equipment. Um, so we will be that school, if you will. Um, so I am uh, um, flipping all over these. Does that look good? Yeah. Are we good? You Looks got good on my end. Yeah. My presentation. I don't know where our faces are on, on your screen, but mine are kind of just floating around here, kind of put in the bottom. Is that right? Sure. Okay. Yeah, works so for me. Everybody who is watching, this is a Coffee Tech Talk, and I uh, just wanted to, you know, give. You know, quick introduction to the two of us. Um, our, you know, motto of this thing is if, if, if you get by with a hammer and cold tap water to brew coffee, perhaps you don't need us, but we would highly recommend that you do. Um, you know, service calls are kind of like the, the, the most hectic thing that, you know, in the coffee industry where people need to get it done and they need to get it done right away because every minute is a dollar, you know, you know, wasted. And that, and that goes with not only properly operating equipment, but also properly calibrated, you know, and looking at different types of technology to, uh, you know, save you money behind the bar. I mean, look at grinding, you know, technology over the years where, you know, we used to be dosing coffee down the drain or at least, you know, right into the, the waste basket. And now we have this technology where, um, you know, you grind on demand and it's also very accurate. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but uh, Marty, you've saved probably a lot of a lot of time and money for a lot of people. Um, and it always comes at a cost. And I think that people respect the cost after they understand uh, the value that, 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 that technicians bring to the coffee industry. So I think that this is just kind of a space for us to kind of do some tech talk and uh, field some questions and, and host some special guests one of these days <laughs> after we get things kind of rolling a little better. We're also gonna be trying to ask, you know, ha have audience ask questions, but, um, we're working on how to field those questions and uh, you know, maybe next week or, or later on in the, in the, 
in today's uh, event, we'll be able to do that. And, and just a, a quick note, next week, we're going to be hosting this on the SCA US chapter Facebook page. So we get a, a little bit of a, a of, of a larger coffee community audience other than just my, my personal friends on Facebook and Marty, your friends on Facebook too, although you have a, you cast a wide net of friends there in the, in the tech world too, so. But hey, um, we're gonna start this off with, uh, you know, the next slide, um, which is, I believe it says service call, is that right? It does on my screen, service call, right. and that's, I'm assuming, John, that that's a service call that you ran we're not referring to service call of the company. It's in other words. No, no, no. Yeah. And, and, oh, and, and another disclaimer, uh, this is just a service call that I did last night. And, uh, I, I highly recommend nobody do anything with espresso equipment, uh, that involves, uh, electricity and water that you are not confident or know what's going on. I would call a technician. I would even call a technician when I'm on a service call. So I, I have, I have no shame in that. If I don't know what's going on, Typically, you just really don't want to dive into something. Um, it can get very dangerous, and, and people have have gotten hurt. And um, it's 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 no joke. This is this is uh, well worth the money spent to call Marty to do this, not me. But you know, he's in KC, I'm in Lincoln, so it's kind of a drive. But anyway. <laughs> Um, hey, well, John, you can come to one of our classes or several. We'll have a whole series of classes, and we'll we'll get you up to speed and certified. And I'm so cheap. I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. Um, wait, wait. So what happened here, Marty? What do we got? What's going on in the left side here? Just, just by that photo, can you tell what's going on? Well, it looks to me like you've got an up close picture of a safety pressure valve. On what machines? Well, that's, that's uh, again, based on what little bit I see there, that's going to be a CMA style or a, uh, or a, uh, Seminelli. Okay, you got it. It's a Seminelli. It's an Appia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there you go. Do you know what year it is just by looking at that? Because <laughs> I'd be interested <laughs> if you can just be like, "That's a 2016." No, I'm, it is a 2016. I'm, I'm, oh. Okay, I'm definitely not that good. But it's in good shape. It looks clean like that throughout the entire machine. There's no heavy rust or anything like that. But um, so so Lynn, who, who who might be joining us today, thank you for for reaching out to Arbor Day Coffee and and and, uh, and looking into using our program, and we appreciate that. And like part of that is is for me to get out there and make sure that the equipment works right, it works well, and and it's you know servicing the coffee that we're providing in in the best way possible. So you know she had called last night and said that the machine, um, you know, there's water coming out of the group head, <clears throat> just constant water coming out of the group head when the when the flow jet hooked up to a flow jet was turned on water would then flow out of the group head so i went there took off the top realized that it was actually just dripping over the group head and coming out of the around the group head and it was uh water was flowing out of this uh, uh out of this area here so uh -huh. what should i do to stop it and what did i do to stop it two different <laughs> two different answers what should i have done marty what's my first step i should have done on a on an app okay um, uh, of course, if you don't know the operation of how this thing actually operates, what that safety relief valve is relieving, or it's a safety valve for the, your steam boiler, and your steam boiler technically should never be more than about three quarters full. In other right. words, there should be a steam air gap. I say air, um, but it's a steam gap between the top of the water surface and the, the top of the of that boiler. Um, so uh, if you've got water coming out of that device, um, that means your, your boiler's flooded. You've got some reason um, there's water getting into there when it's not supposed to be. So you've got to track that down. Right. Well, you know, I've, I first thought it was the, you know, possibly the fill uh, probe. Or the, the that's, fill that's a, that that is a possibility that that's causing that absolutely. And I and I thought you know and and looking at the two different types of designs of machines, right? You get a lot of, you know where I spend a lot of time on a double boiler like a La Marzocco or Sonesso's or whatnot. You know, like you, you have like saturated group head for the coffee brewing, and then you have what you would just explain the, the steam boiler where you have you know some air air space on the top of there that you need to have that 
that fill probe to measure how much water you want to fill it up with. But sure. Now let's it, talk. No, not to interrupt you, but let's let's no. just take this one step at a time. You you first your your first checkbox, which rightfully so, you need to start eliminate possibilities. Right. Um, so let's go down that rabbit hole just real quick, and I'll try to make it quick as possible. Yeah. Um, on your fill probe, there's two ways that that probe can fail um, because it consists of two major components. It, can, it can consists of the center rod, if you will, which is usually a stainless steel rod yep. that conducts um, uh, the small voltage to the water. The right. other component is um, an insulator that it's a white insulator usually um, that insulates that rod from the the actual hex nut that's holding it to the boiler. Absolutely. So the two ways that that can fail is if your insulator has failed and it's not insulating and it actually is, is making some little bit of conductivity between that rod and the boiler casing, then you're, you will never fill it will think that it's touching water. It thinks that it's, that it's going to uh, not need to fill the, mm -hmm. which was not your case. Right. But there is also um, calcium and other mineral deposits that can build up on the end of that probe and insulate that probe from the water. And so in that case, and this is a possibility that we would need to eliminate, which you, you went down that, that path to do that. Um, if the end of that is coated with minerals that right. are non-conductive, then it will tend to keep it um, from touching the water, thinking right. that it's not filled and overfill your boiler. So this kept so on you filling. I mean, it was like you turned on the yeah. you turn on the flow jet, it'll keep on filling. So we overlooked something extremely important that does not occur on a La Marzocco, uh, you know, because they have the one-way valve fill valves, right? Um, and then on a Nuevo Sambinelli, I believe that you've got this issue right here. I believe that that's the one. It's the manual fill valve was left open, perhaps due to the draining prior to the shipment. It was never used before. There's a fresh install. And it would have uh -huh. been a, a faster diagnosis of this issue, but I didn't start there. Guess uh, what the person said was the fill probe. So of I didn't even I didn't know it was a new install. Uh, had I known that, yeah. then, then there you go. And then had I, right. had I had known that I should have checked the manual valve. So it's important on, on uh, Appias and whatnot. Any, if anybody out there owns an Appia or, you know, like you try to call a technician first, but, you know, if it is overfilling like this, and, it, and this is not the first time it happened. I just, it's been a while since it happened for, to me, but it simply lift up the drink, you know, the, the, the drip tray. And there's, there's two black, um, what do you call them? Um, uh, Quarter turn Quarter, valve yeah. handles. So if they're in line with the tube, that means that they're open. And if they're if they're 90 degree angle, that means they're closed. And that one should be shut, the manual valve. If it's open, it'll continue to fill uh, manually regardless of, of anything else. Is that correct? That's correct. And what's that, yep. what that is for is you do not want to energize your heat elements until you know they're submerged underwater because um, they're not designed to, to run without being coated with water. And so that gives you, as the installer, the opportunity to hook it to water, fill your boiler before you ever even send power to the machine. Right. And we're going to talk about power to the machine in just a minute, because right now it's off. There's no power to the machine. Um, so anyway, this is what I did when I took out the, the fill <laughs> probe. It busted right off when I, when I like put it back broke. Back. I mean, I've never had this never happened to me before. I, I've taken a lot of fittings off of boilers, put them back on. And I called you last night. It's like, hey, Marty, uh, I just created a problem that I didn't want to have. <laughs> and how often does that happen to you? And how often do you just not want to oh. talk about it? And just kind of like you have that moment of like, uh oh, they're sitting right there watching you and you just created more of a problem. You don't want to tell them, but you got to fix it. And whose responsibility is that now? It's, it's a $10 part. I don't care about this one. This is a, a free, happy to fix it. And, you know, my fault, sure. for, you know, is it my fault for breaking it? When I, when I was, I was doing this left hand, barely turning it down. And, you know, these fittings, you do have to kind of crank them down a little bit, don't you? They, well, not, not, not with like, 
like not hammer. with that kind of force, especially on a copper boiler. Uh, you'll you'll deform that boiler. So um, yeah. I'm going to guess that that probably had that. I'm I'm assuming that wasn't a brand new machine. That that might have been a new installation, but not a uh, not a new machine. Am I correct? Well, 2016. So not, okay. not a terribly old one either. It was you know, four or five years old. Because um, yeah. Uh, they they do break and just depending on the the, the age and deterioration um well so i call that I mean, there's some shared responsibility there uh, always, you, you always can't just treat it bad, bad. right but so it, it may have been destined to break it felt like it was destined to break because when i turned it i was like wait why isn't it not stopping and it was my left hand one turn and you know, that's kind of i'm not cranking it down either so you know, I, I, I realized that I had one at home from a, from a La Marzocco, and then I called you and said, hey, is that going to fit? And you're like, yeah. And then now they just realize that they're all pretty standard. So that's a, that's a lesson learned. That's great to know. And then sure. I called up uh, Nueva Saminelli and uh, talked to a tech there, and he told me to do like one of these, uh, what do they call it, like quick uh, or uh, easy, easy, easy out, out. right? Yeah. Number four, easy out. Never used one before, but I will use them again. Ho well, hopefully I never have to use them again. But um, this was the easiest out. It, it just came out so easy. Um, so it's this, this tool that kind of grabs a hold and kind of does a reverse um, reverse direction to, to kind of uh, take that out. And being that there's a there's a hole already drilled inside of this uh, probe, it was pretty simple. So. Well, that's great. Good job, John. Yeah. Well, I'm proud of myself on that one. <laughs> Not that I went there first because I should have checked the manual fill valve, period. And then looked into um, yeah if you were getting because here's, here's let's talk just real quick if you're getting water into there and water pushing out and you've never applied power to it then any of the components that require part of the or that are part of the brain circuit it, they're they're not going to be your problem well okay that makes so, sense. so let's talk about electricity here um so the machine is uh you know has a plate here it says a 208 240 volt uh, manufactured on uh, January 8th of 2016. It's an Appia 2S2 uh, group. Really nice condition. Uh, bought used, but um, it, you know, not a typical used in my opinion. I've seen a lot of bad used. This is a good used machine. Um, very nice and clean from a, you know, purchased through a for, through an espresso technician company. Um, but it came without a, uh, without a, without a, um, without any, um, Part, well, without a tail, I guess. What do you call them? Like a, just a power cord, I guess. Just cord without a cap on it. Or yeah. power so this, came without, this came without a plug or without a cord. So they had to hook okay. it up. Um, and I uh, see where you're going here. Well, I'll, I'll bet they, I bet they didn't want to spend the money on the. This is the outlet. This, this is where we're at with the outlet. And this is. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Sorry. This is the outlet and I'm trying to move my little box here. And this is a trailer, uh, a mobile trailer, beautiful, beautifully built out. This thing's gonna make tons of money. <laughs> it's really popular in Nebraska right now. Like these kind of things are uh, just kind of like popping up like, you know, crazy and, and you're doing great jobs. This is run off a generator okay. and the power is coming in. Um, can you see my cursor right here? You know, we got, we got some conduit going up to the junction sure. box. And this junction box, is this what that's called a junction box? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, it's got, you know, 110 coming in here. And this wire that's circled with yellow, that is how the machine, the espresso machine is hardwired into the junction box. So I can't really, and, and I'm, I'm turning the, 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 the on and off switch and, you know, these work. And I was plugging in uh, power, you know, the grinder works, everything. The, this works. You know, there's power to it, but I can't check without taking off the junction box cover as to whether or not there's power going to the machine here. So I thought, well, next step would be to go here. You could, and into the machine. So what's going on here? Um, I have a friend and I are kind of debating this. Uh, you, know, you know, he's an electrician, not really seeing the photos too much, but I was like, well, here's a, this ground. We got a neutral. We've got a lead and a lead and a lead, right? Three leads, one, two, three. Uh huh. We got a neutral and we got a ground. This wire right here was not installed with the machine, but an electrician, I believe, might have hooked this up. Okay. But I put these notes up here and I want you to 
tell me whether or not I'm, I'm on the right track. My assumption is that why they have no power to the machine won't turn on, um, the, 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 the breaker's on, but for a 220 machine, they require two hots and a neutral. Is that correct or incorrect? That's incorrect. Okay. So this wired is, there's one hot. Well, okay. Through, yeah. Okay. For, for mostly espresso machines, but this particular machine right here, um, it does not require a neutral period. Right. So maybe that's the ground. What should be coming to the machine, regardless of the colors on the cord, I know that white, typically is neutral, um, but they don't make a three wire cord that has two colors on a ground. So you're gonna have a black, a white, and a green ground. Exactly. Um, what needs to be coming to that is two hot legs that make up 220. And on most espresso machines, you do not need a neutral. In other words, uh, you don't need that power, power ground. So uh, I made a mistake neutral. here in, in the dialogue where, that, where it says neutral, it should say, Two hots and a ground. That's what I well, mean. Well, yes, no, because here <laughs> in the U.S. we use we use the term neutral in the United States, um, meaning meaning that neutral or the or the is common to ground. Right. Um, in Europe, they use that neutral um, much like we do, but they're two hundred and twenty volts. So they, um, if if we have a machine that's you know, international and in which espresso equipment is is definitely in that category. A lot of times you'll see that, that it'll have an N or a neutral um, or even a C for common, um, but it means that it needs to have a hot wire put there. So I looked at my espresso machine at home. I got a two group linea here. It's for sale. Anybody wants it. And I also got a K30. We'll talk about that later. Marty, if you got anything, to <laughs> let people know. But anyway, okay. I was looking at it and it had, you know, black, white, green, two hots and a you know, two hots on the ground. Ground, right? So this this unit is wired one hot, one black to the hot, one white that goes to the end. As you can see there, this white is going to the end. This is an end underneath there. I wish I had a better photo. Uh -huh. And then the green goes to the ground. This is the ground, right? Ground symbol, ground. And we've got, you know, that's pretty obvious. We've got a ground, but here this should be two hots and a ground, but we have one of the hots, you know, being sent to the neutral. And we have one of the hots being sent to a lead one. So here I see lead one is jumped to lead two, and then a lead two is then jumped to lead three. And all we have here is one hot going to lead one. We have this white going to the neutral, and we've got the green going to the ground. How do we correct this? Well, and you're going to need to refer back to what this particular machine, what they're really wanting and what their nomenclature is saying there. Um, because like I said, in some machines that end would definitely be where you would land that hot. Um, on some machines, if you have L2, L3, that would be your two separate hots. Um, so there should be some information that came with that machine that would, would uh, identify that as what it's really wanting. I'd refer so to that. Instead of just kind of experiment. No, you're saying, do not experiment. You're saying, you're, you're saying to <laughs> call a technician, maybe even call up Nueva Simonelli, talk to their technician, exactly. have this exact <laughs> conversation, and also refer to, you know, the schematics and get some background in electronics, you know, in electricity, I'm sorry, before sure. I go ahead and try to just kind of wiggle these around, see what, what, what explodes and what doesn't, right? And that is coming from someone that, for me, that I have been doing this for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't make obvious sense, I'm calling someone or I'm researching it so that it does make sense. <laughs> I'm not going to use a piece of equipment for a test meter. Yeah, and you never should, right? And I've learned that lesson in the past. And I, Oh, I, I have too. I've got a multimeter now and I'm still trying to figure out how to use it. And uh, one of my, one of my uh, friends who's an electrician, you know, looked at this and said, that's three phase. And I'm like, I don't, you know, maybe it could be three phase. What's, you know, single phase, three phase, you know, that, that's a whole nother beast of, of a conversation. So sure. I think we're going to, we're going to leave this one as is. And um, I'm going to call up Nueva Seminelli and kind of talk him through it. But um, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, a, there will be information available for that. And um I, I, you know, 
I'd be interested in seeing what they, they say on that. I may have information here on that app yet. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I did pull that on you with a surprise. You had no, you had no time to even research it. So um, let's see. Well, main thing is don't, don't just start wiring things up. Exactly. Um, find out what they mean by that. Because uh, when you're talking European versus U.S., it, that end could definitely mean they want the hot there because uh, their, their wall outlets are 220. And hey, maybe so if we looked on Facebook right now, people would be telling us what, we're, what we should be doing. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, so my next conversation, we, we, got, a, we got a lot to address here today, Marty. Um, okay. Flat disc crushing deep cut triangular prism tooth and ghost burrs. That's what I call them. What do you call them? <laughs> what, what are they? I mean, why, why are people call them ghost burrs? I mean, I don't know. You, you threw that one on me too. Um, my, I, I'm a little more just, you know, down to earth. They, those are our burrs that you would find in a, in a, uh, uh, like a grocery store grinder, bun, grind master. Um, right. <clears throat> are you ghosting your burrs? Um, are your burrs ghosting you or are you ghosting your burrs? That's a 40 year old, you know, like dad joke kind of thing, like trying to be hip, but, um, <laughs> My thing, are, are we giving them, you know, enough credit for their particle distribution, accuracy, you know, quality, you know, as far as grind, or are we still, you know, looking at, um, you know, comparing the two here, you know, which ones perform better and, and, and why are we, you know, why, why is most of the industry, you know, using blade, or I'm sorry, using these, uh, you know, more of a cutting burr, I guess what you call them. Sure. Well, as, as you're crushing or you're going there's a lot more science that goes into designing birds than what uh, what i ever thought there was i i've sat through a couple lectures on on um burr uh, uh i don't know fundamentals if you will um mm -hmm. and uh there's a lot of science that goes in on it and ultimately it depends on the application what you're shooting for um with your with your coffee um, everyone used well. Everyone used to think that that consistent granular size. In other words, you you want ninety nine point nine percent of all your granules to be one size. Well, we've right. kind of found that we we want a recipe in that that we want actually more than one size. We need some of the fines. We need some of the larger ones to to end up with the the result that we want. It's kind of like. Uh, those fines end up being just that little bit of salt on, on top of your steak, if you and will. I would say that, that that kind of leads me to like, uh, you know, some experience in the green coffee industry and looking at uh, different uh, screen size selections and, and, you know, having, you know, every bean the exact same size and every particle being the exact same size that, you know, if you cup these coffees, you know, next to each other side by side, where you have a complete screen size, you know, particle distribution of, you know, whatever, you know, 850 UMs or 500 UMs or whatever microns, you know, of, of, a, of, a, of a selection of coffee that's all like 15 to 16 screen size with no 18 or no 14 or anything like that, that if you take away those different screen sizes that it doesn't have the complexity like you were saying, like you need a recipe. And- uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. But diversity is key when it comes to, you know, these recipes and um, I did a lot of uh, uh, coffee uh, brewing, you know, with that particle distribution in mind. And that's kind of, you're, you're, you're right on there, Marty. That's, that's what's happening. So anyway, I'd say like the one on the left, you know, definitely used a lot more in, in, in you know, finer grinding espresso. And on the right, you see these in, uh, you know, the grocery store settings. But to me, that doesn't mean that it's a negative thing. I actually love this grinder. And I've had some pretty good success brewing um, day after day. And um, I think mm -hmm. they're starting to get a little worn out, but. Uh. <laughs> sure, yeah, and you'll notice that the different design burrs for that application, if you're, if you're tending to do, if the application is espresso, um, where you are on a much finer grind um, output, um, the design of those crusher burrs that you have in the lower right there, they, they just don't do a very good job of producing consistent at that fine grind. So, so different designs work better at different applications. 
Yeah, this is this is pretty good for your your pour over, um, you know, filter coffee. In, in my Absolutely. Opinion. So let's talk. Here's here's a challenge for you. What is this? <laughs> I'm just, well, I'm just, you know, <laughs> if you can if you can identify that, I'd be I'd be impressed, you know. And I'll, I'll give you a hint. It's it's you know it's from a grinder, <laughs> and it's made out of uh, like foam. And if, you know, I was repairing a K30. All right, I'll give you that. And it fell out of the grinder and I don't know where to put it back. Well, <laughs> and I looked at this. Okay, if you're, if you're wanting to stump the chump, you did it. The only thing I, is it, is this an older grinder? Yes, I think it's one of the first uh, K30 versions because it was, it actually said Astoria on it. So it was like a, you know, branded Astoria, but it's a K30 and uh I think some, right here. some of these technicians out there might might go oh yeah i've seen that the only thing i can think of is that um someone may have either put it in there to reduce some vibration um or uh yeah, I, don't it's know. I, I, I don't know it's got this cut and i was thinking it might be you know so i got the schematics and i tried to find out like where would that yeah. cut be? and on the back of this chute there's like a little divot but there's also this, you know, this, what do they call this thing, the number 36 that kind of breaks up the coffee clumps? Oh, your... that, yeah, that's the silicone flapper. So I'm thinking like it, it might have dropped out a, the chute somewhere. <laughs> uh, no, no. But you know what? <laughs> it's working just fine without that part. So I think in the future, they should just not. <clears throat> yeah, there, there you go. I actually, I've, I can't identify that. You've stumped the chump. All right, um, I can't identify it. Go ahead and write that into the comment section as tell me where, where, what it is and where I should put it back into the K30. This one's for sale, by the way, and it works just fine. I was calling you about this one because it's such an older model. I was trying to like push the button and use the dial and that didn't work because of these older models. You said you got to hold down both the buttons and then that'll put you to programming mode so then you can Yeah, system. that's that's an earlier version of software. But I did notice that that this one was kind of a, a little, the pentometer, is that what they call it? The potentiometer. Potentiometer, see, like that's, you know, I'm speaking <laughs> the language. It was yeah, a little the, loose. The knob, the, the volume pot. Yeah, that little knobby thing was a little loose. Yeah. I tightened it up and works better. There we go. <laughs> Getting down to it. And that's the schematics of the inside of a, of a K30, but I'm also thinking, you know, a little product review today. Let's talk about what's going on in the grinding technology that we see today, where, uh, you know, we talk about these ghost burrs versus flat burrs. And then we, we talk about 65, and then there's like an E80, I think now. So that 65 means, what does that mean? Oh, that's the di outside diameter of these flat burrs, 65. Why does uh, burr size matter? Well, it's uh, smaller the burrs, the slower the output, less consistency. Um, uh, I mean, you, there is a balance um, that you find um, uh, larger burrs, you know, part of it is money. You don't want to go too large. Um, but <clears throat> uh, yeah, size matters when it comes to burrs um, and application. Uh, I recently had to, uh, a chance to test drive this uh, E65S on the right. And then I heard about this E65S GBW on the left and I got kind of jealous and I'm like, I want one of those. Yeah. That. But the E65S is from Malconing and that, that uh, chute, this is the coolest thing about it. This chute right here is, is magnetic. It's just detachable. You just pull it right off and clean it. I yeah, love oh, ab absolutely. No, no yeah. more taking the top off. You just, you literally just reach over there and grab it and take it off. And it holds the port filter really well. Um, you know, I, I put a thread up on my Facebook just to kind of say like, hey, I'm looking for a grinder, you know, what's out there. And, you know, I, I love the Climate Pro too. I mean, I concept, I haven't actually had my, my hands on that one yet, but I've had a Climate Pro, the normal, you know, um, Mythos. Those are, those are great machines, but you, you kind of turned me on to kind of asking about this one. And I, I gotta say it, it, it was clean. It was the adjustable, the, the adjustable chute too, with that little piece of plastic uh, um, adjustment behind that chute is really clever and it's simple. 
Yeah. But we're really, and not to digress away from, from the one yeah. model you've got showing there, but we're really into a, a time that is really exciting. Uh, we went for years, 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 years um, of uh, no grinder, new stuff coming out. Uh, it was all, all just, you know, doser and yeah. just, just uh, no change whatsoever. Uh, great grinders that run forever, but um, no features, no, no niceties. Um, and the, companies the manufacturers now are are putting out some really nice um features that come along with the you know the reliability of a, of a strong motor and and something that will grind forever um but they're you know like this grinder has six different doses um uh, it's got that easy to clean spout um uh, much easier to calibrate the burrs on that. And one thing that a lot of people want. K30, that K30 is a kind of a, I, I spent a couple hours figuring that one out. Yeah. Now K30 is a challenge. The peak was a little bit better. Um, yeah. But but one of the things that I like, like about the C65S series is, uh, and a lot of people won't, won't understand. Well, they, they won't, well, they're not me. Um, we we <laughs> took one of these apart with the sole purpose of figuring out how difficult would be it would be to powder coat it, and this is a really nice machine to powder coat. I I would, uh, yeah, it's easy, very easy. The K thirties are pretty easy too, right? Those those panels just come. You think it is easier? <laughs> if you're thing? only if you're only going to do the the side panels, yeah, it's real easy. But if you're going to do the rest of it, you've got to it's it's got to all come apart. Yeah. Um, well, hey, so like the one on the left, this this E65S grind by yeah. weight, what it stands for, GBW. I got an, another, another slide that kind of gets a little bit more of a close up and, and, and shows this in action. But I got to say, this is the, the new technology that's happening with grinders right now. Climate Pro 2 has it. Um, Malconing is starting to grind by weight. So, you know, what does that mean? It's not by time. And that's the classic way of doing it where you have a timer you, you give it three seconds, it'll grind a certain amount of a certain uh, particle size, and that's what you're going to get. So you, threw in, you throw another coffee in there of a different weight and a different size and different fracturing capacity or I don't know, whatever, you know, it, it, coffee is different. So it's going to grind at different times. And this is really minute, very, very small measurements we have to deal with. So I think that this grinder has added two things that are pretty cool. One is grind by weight, and the other one is the accuracy of, of this reading of this adjustment. Did have you have you played around with one of these yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're nice, very nice. It's like it's like driving an old you know the old 60s, 70s cars that I grew up with. They're they were you know workhorses. They were hot rods. They were nice. But you go out and buy a new car now. They've got all the cameras and the mirrors and the auto braking and stuff and that's kind of what we're going into with these new grinders is some features that really really help out and what's nice is they help out every shot you pull this one's uh, pretty cool i think malconi should start you know kick, kicking us back some yeah <laughs> i'm gonna keep on talking about this a little bit but you know they are not a sponsor in any way shape or form they're just a an opportunity that I had to kind of check out some new technology and uh, you know, great company long time. Sure. But, um, so this, this right here, the 6.16 mm, this, this measures uh, this adjustment. So it, it's showing how close the burrs are together or apart, you know? So as, it, as, you, as you make it finer, that you know, millimeter adjustment will, will, will get finer. And as, as the burrs you know, separate, that number will, will increase. So you get a very accurate reading like if you want your, if you, you know, usually it's on, it, it used to be more analog where it's at a two, you, you put it at two. Here, it's a digital reading of 0.16 mm. And if someone comes along and readjusts it, you know exactly what your recipe is. This is recipe building, you know, uh, opportunities. And then you have the 18 grams where that's where you're, you're dosing by weight, but it's not by time. So what, what's built in here is a scale, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it actually tears when you when you put the portafilter in it tears your portafilter so it starts out at zero and then starts counting as it dispenses. So can can you plug this into a uh, you know a PB you know linea that has uh, scales built into the tray yet so it can kind of 
right not now. to my knowledge i don't think they will interface but it would be a nice asset to that setup yeah i'm going to patent um, that that idea of course it's probably already patented <laughs> it's already happening people are probably it's there. it's where we're headed and it's exactly where we're headed have you taken one of these apart yeah they're 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 simple straightforward easy um love love them serviceability um over the the uh a 30 or the peak and the scale reliability easy to fix i mean they're fairly new so he, you know proofs in the pudding they they are using a uh uh not really off the shelf but a readily available through them um standard load cell that's uh uh, so they're not reinventing, making something difficult to service. Um, so I assume they're going to be as, as reliable as anything that's out there. Well, I'm trying to do a, uh, ask us a question, but I'm not finding any, uh, I'm sure that there are plenty out there, but I, I'm just not prepared. I, technically speaking with all my computers and my, <laughs> to, to find that. If you see any Marty, let me know, but I do have one question here. This was asked on Facebook uh, through another, uh, can you run a three group Strata EP without the external pump? Question mark. Okay. Take it away, Marty. Well. <laughs> I guess we got 15 minutes, we're gonna turn this into an hour conversation, why not? Okay. I mean, I'll edit it down later. <laughs> the, there are Stratas out there that have internal pumps. If they have an internal pump uh, for each group, there'd be an internal pump for each group. Not all stratas, you can't just say strata and, and know that it's that particular model. Um, but there are stratas that have individual variable pumps and you thank you for that, um, which is going to allow you profile um, extraction per group and they will run fine. And yes, you can run that without an external pump. The only thing you're giving up is the pump pressure to aid you in a steam boiler refill. Um, you have to make sure that you've got plenty of and, and consistent um, water supply and a higher pressure than your steam boiler. So if you're at 1.5 bar on your steam boiler, um, you need to be above that, substantially above that on your water supply because none of these internal pumps aid in the refilling of the steam boiler. Does the, the external pump aid in helping regulate the pressure that goes to these pumps? Like um, at all? all? Only in the effect of if you have uh, inconsistent, uh, a widely swinging inconsistent pump pressure coming to to the machine right. from your city um, or from your from exactly your otherwise otherwise operational wise you won't you won't see a problem this kind of leads me into a whole nother topic of discussion for another day and i think we'll probably get into pressure profiling someday very soon maybe next week who knows we'll see what the response is but yeah there's a mechanical gear pump i think is what we're talking about um mm -hmm. and then we have a you know uh this this strata ep guidebook again if you go to lamarzokousa.com and like look at look at some of the documents they have this really cool um guidebook that, that kind of plays as an introduction to pressure profiling um and a guide to you know kind of use the the strata ep but i saw that question i was kind of like wow this you know if they have an external pump and there's no reason for it why would a manufacturer uh, include it and if it's and it's for the steam boiler that makes sense but is it an excessive boiler at this point to add to the package yeah. or not? Now, recently we had a machine shipped to us to install and it came with an external pump um, along, it was an EP, so it had the internal pumps, um, but there was no wiring whatsoever to support that external pump. Um, oh, interesting. So, so that answered our question there that, um, we, even if we wanted to run that, there was, there was not, um, you know, without us getting in and, and doing the wiring harness ourselves, um, it just physically wasn't there. Well, um, I guess that kind of wraps up our uh, 45 minute to an hour conversation. And I, I don't know. Yeah, I think that we're going to try to next week, we're going to be hosting this um, live streaming on the U.S. 
uh, you know, SCA US chapter Facebook page. Um, and that um, be the Coffee Tech Talk Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Central Time next week. And we're still looking for special guests and, and maybe having a little bit, uh, you know, more interaction with, with uh, people who are joining us live in the morning. Um, I'm working on my abilities to multitask. Uh, so we'll, we'll you get, may have to get an assistant. We'll get there. We, 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 yeah, or I need to get off and, you know, have some, someone else, you know, on here and, and I'll, I'll, I'll do the, I'll do the background stuff. And so you and you and the special guests can kind of lead the show. So, um, well, you, from my take, I'm willing to go down any rabbit hole that's thrown out there. Um, well, we'll get there. You, you can even send, you send me some suggestions, you know, that, that to everybody, send us suggestions on what you'd like to talk about. If you have a really unique and interesting uh, challenge to ask Marty, uh, please don't ask me. <laughs> As we just ask Marty. Oh, uh, you, John, you probably know more than you think you do. Uh, no, pretty sure I don't. <laughs> but that's a good thing, right? Um, yeah, you're probably, I don't know, who knows? Well, anyway. Thank you all for joining us today, Marty. It's a, it's always a pleasure. Look forward to this every week. That's, it's fun. It's great, great. Fun Glad stuff. to do this. Learning Glad a lot. To do it. I always learn something. All right. Oh, so do I. Cheers. See you later. All right. Bye bye.